Good evening. Welcome to Grandma's Attic Music Review. I'm so happy to be with you tonight. Oh boy. Oh boy. So you guys have heard the name Tracy Walton. He's been here. Many of the musicians that he's produced have been here. He sent me a CD a couple weeks ago and uh, wow. So when I went, wow, I had to, I had to find this guy. So I went, you know, creeping around, stalking around on, on Facebook and uh, found him. And he said he'd come to, this, to the show. And we're going to have so much fun tonight. If you like, now I'm going to tell you two different musical names. And you're going to be like, yeah, they don't go together. But David Byrne from the Talking Heads. Yep, kind of, yeah, a little bit in there. Yeah, that's cool. And so we all know how I feel about Bob Dylan, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> our guest tonight is very Bob Dylan-esque. And he didn't like Bob Dylan at the beginning either. A lot of his music has a, a, a Bob Dylan-ish sound. But his music is very much his own. It's really great stuff. He's going to be playing all originals tonight. I'm really excited to bring him to the show. I think you're going to love him. I do. He's a, let me use the word, he's a dreamer, just like me. Uh, that's what he wrote on my CD, by the way. It's very cool. But anyway, I want you to welcome into your heart, into your home, and sit back and relax because this is going to be a fun show. Charlie Diamond. I'm Charlie Diamond, folk singer, songwriter. I've wrestled an alligator, tamed a wild mustang, and fought a tornado to get down here to you. I'll be doing a couple originals for you. This one's called Cambridge Fact Checker. Your friends have left you your all in. With your gaslight lamps and your electric batteries, you catch a glimpse of the moonlight. And you walk to the river bank, close your eyes and think what would life be like. Mountain stream down at a, a local factory. 
That will work better. <laughs> yeah, so um, there's this girl that lives in Hawaii, and she's probably my soulmate. But uh, as the tragic love story goes, she lives there and I live here. But every time she comes home, because she's from Mass, we hang out. Last time she was here, she called me up and said, how, how fast can you... Uh, how spontaneous do you feel, and how quickly can you get to Boston? And I said, uh, very spontaneous, let's do this. So I hopped right in the truck, went right up there. We had an awesome night at a concert. I had to work the next day, so I dropped her off to her friends, but just like an old, old school Hollywood movie, it was raining, and she blew me a kiss in the rain. And so that really stuck with me, and uh, I went home and wrote a song around it. It's called Emily's Spells, Diamonds and Seas, as in the ocean. I've played it for her, she really likes it. Love and under stars. 
best And I kept it moving along How alone in our ramble And I just kept it singing my song On a cold and crisp November morning How good Montana's plane Straight to an Indian A reservation and asked them If I could stay They said your heart tell you sometimes I feel like everything and then uh, other days I feel like nothing so this is a song about the in-between and it's called uh, my life leads Sat next to you as he drove us, we two, down the Wilbur Cross Road. Wind in your head didn't take care, you turned to me to say. Spoke of your life, spoke of your dream, all that you've done, all that you've seen. And me, I just stuck my hand out the window and said, What have I ever really done with my life? Except run away from the town I was born in tonight. I've been chasing the wind across the plains. Adventures in cities, you ask me their names. Made friends with the doll man from the big building at the end of the block. Talked with the lady, sells all the flowers from out of her cart. She said there was a time when I traveled the world. Sailed the seas as they sail a girl. Stars as my maps, I saw all the lands from far, far away. And I can tell by the look in your eyes, you're lost out at sea. Part of your heart is missing and you are in misery. Well, wherever you're going, I hope that you find the solace you seek and in due time. Maybe you'll see that there's no difference between you and me. Poets, we are born. Poets, we will always be. One day your life will be better than the nights where you colorfully dream. And your dreams will fade away into your reality. And so I stuck my hand out the window and stared at the wind. I travel around a lot. My favorite thing to do is explore new towns and meet new people and go on these adventures with my dog. I have a 170 pound English Mastiff and uh, if I knew I could, I would have brought him. 
definitely. He would have just chilled right here, right next to me. Yeah, he's my baby. I've had him since he was a little pup. Uh, he's my manager and my security. Um, he's also, you know, my best friend. So we trap me and him. We drive all over New England. We just pick a direction and go. So and sometimes he comes on shows with me too. I'll, you know, we'll just sleep in the pickup together. I think I was somewhere out in the Catskills, hanging out at a uh, cafe, and a really cool barista girl came out. And I feel like the less you know about someone, the more mysterious they are. So the more you get to know them, you know, they kind of fit into these parameters. But when you meet a stranger, it's it's exciting because they could be anybody. So I kind of wrote a song for this girl that I've never met. She doesn't know I wrote it, but just my vision of who she would be. But I like a really strong, independent girl. It's called The Great Unknown. Your voice is fleeting, the street light hums. Pitcher's hiking, he's got his thumb. Distance poetic bums. Beside in lines they seen on a wall. Brownstone building three stories tall. Music playing from the basement hall. Entrance fee. Drove your motorcycle through a bar. And you dressed in heels and you got a scar. You wear it proudly on your face. Well, that's what you call. Catskills late 
I got a Hudson River Valley date A high society boy Well ain't that great Thank you. So, uh, can't probably see one for you. I'll do, uh, do one called uh, Guitar Girl, if you'd like. Uh, my, my buddy just moved to Staten Island, so I'll go sleep on his couch, and then I'll bop into the city a lot and play shows, uh, mostly in, in Brooklyn or, like, the village. And um, this song is about hanging out with my friend, the whole day um then i played the show and then you know hanging out with him after so it's kind of about the whole day spent together with with him and his wife i kind of wrote the chorus and then i wrote the verses it's almost like two songs came together as one And she said, you only get one chance in this life. And I know I gotta make it count. She grabbed my face and give me a kiss like.
Thank you. Yeah, if you if you like what you're listening to, um, I did just do an album. Uh, it's called Poet in Town. I recorded it with Tracy Walton at On Deck Studios, and you can find it up anywhere online where you like to stream or find songs. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right on. I um, also have a website, charliediamondmusic.net, which has links to all the socials and music and all that. Um, but I'm, I'm mostly active like on Instagram. So my Instagram handle is charlie.diamond.music. Give me a follow and uh, join the revolution. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, guard is, the guard is doing their Breezeway winter cinema series. Also, um, Keb Mo is coming to the guard, so check out tickets for that. And next Saturday night, the 18th, is the Eastern Connecticut Symphony Orchestra with the chorus. So that's going to be an interesting night. Get out there and support local music. Get out there and support local art. You know how I feel about it. Let's talk to Charlie Diamond. Hi. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. I'm stoked to be here. It's awesome to have you here. I can't even tell you that the trajectory of how we came to meet each other was kind of weird. I got a, I got a CD in the mail. I get hundreds of CDs in the mail, literally. Oh, I no. do. I mean, it, any given month, I probably get about 20 to 25 CDs in the mail from all different people, from all different genres. And um, it didn't say on it that it was from Tracy. It just happened that I opened it. Nice. I don't open every CD right away. I just don't, but it was from Connecticut. So I'm, I'm going to check this out and see what's going on with it. And I stuck it in my CD player, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is some good. And then I kind of had to read the liner notes, and I realized that it was from Tracy. And I was like, well, if Tracy's doing this, then of course it's good. So I had to go looking for you. So the rest is history. Here you are. What a great CD. Yeah, thank you so much. Do you have fun with it? Oh, I had an awesome time. Yeah, and yeah. and Tracy makes it even funner, right? Mm -hmm. Tracy Tracy knows how to do that. Um, how did you meet Tracy? I mean, you're not really like from Connecticut. You live here now, but how did how did you meet Tracy? Yeah, I was just looking for uh, recording studios that were semi close by. Um, I saw Tracy's joint, and I just really liked the vibe, so I called him up, we chatted, and then, uh, you know, just linked up, yeah. He's, he's a lot of fun. Have you seen him play? I have, yeah. I've gone to, <laughs> I've gone to like, so many of his shows, yeah. He's been here, so, you He's know. awesome. He is, yeah. he is. So, anyway, enough about him. Let's talk about you. Oh, my goodness, where do I start? Where do you come from? Where did you start? Where Where are your beginnings from? Well, I was uh, born on a moonless night when the wind was okay, howling through the trees. Okay, here comes the storyteller. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I grew up on, on a mountain in a little town uh, in Connecticut near, near Bradley Airport. But uh, I lived in Virginia for quite a while. I've only kind of recently moved back. Um, and that's where, I, that's where I hailed from, yeah. Yeah. A mountain on a moonless night yes. in Connecticut. Yes, yes. Nice. Yeah. With the wind was playing notes on the leaves. So the mysterious undercurrents of life made sure that I had music in my bones. The is what they tell me. Works that way. Yeah. How do your parents feel about your music? They love it. So music runs in the family. Okay. Yeah, my great grandfather had a like I don't know, fit twenty piece orchestra. Like oh, local. Nice. Yeah. And um, my dad played guitar growing up. He learned from his grandpa. My grandma played uh, violin. Everybody kind of played in the orchestra. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, there was always a guitar k kicking around the house when I was little. And then eventually, she kind of picked it up, started plucking away. Is that what you started playing on with the guitar? You didn't? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I started playing electric guitar. And, like, blues is my roots. And, okay. Um, yeah, I hadn't gotten to. I love the blues. Yeah. Um, and then I got into like Jimi Hendrix type, you know, type stuff. Now yeah. you had to have been like 
early 20s to be getting into Jimi Hendrix. That's the kind of music, that's what age, am I right? No, this is like um, sixth, seventh grade, eighth grade. Really? Yeah. Cause, wow. Yeah, my dad, this was all the music my parents were into. And, okay, um, makes sense. Yeah, so that's what we got played around the house. Yeah, and it was vinyl too. Yeah. Jimmy, of course it was vinyl. Yeah. In my house, it's still vinyl. Yeah. Except for when I get things like this in the mail, I yeah. have to play it over and over and over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> if I you know. decide to put this out on vinyl, colored vinyl would be nice. Yeah. You Definitely. Know, that would be awesome. Right on. So, just saying. Just saying. So you grew up in a musical family. When did you know that you needed to do music? Hmm. There's no particular point, um, but maybe it was around when I was 18, you know, kind of finishing high school and figuring out, like, what I wanted to do in my life. And I mm -hmm. was like, I was like, you know what, like, people that play music are rock stars. It's like, they're always traveling, always meeting new people. You don't work for anyone. They're always breaking the rules. They don't follow the laws. I was like, that sounds like something I want to do. Yeah. There you go. So I started getting into it, yeah. Ooh, rebel in you. Uh, a lot of rebel, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a rebel that stops at red lights, yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. You have to stop at red lights. Some people don't. Yeah. That's cool. When do you think that you wrote your first song? That, I know, like, was third grade. When I started playing guitar, I like, co-wrote it. I had a band in third grade called Blue Tree with my best friend. And nice. Yeah, like Princess Diana had just passed away, so we wrote like a memorial song to her, oh, or, wow. or we tried to. You know? Okay. And it's definitely on like tape somewhere. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Those little chipmunk voices, you know, like. <laughs> That's so funny. There's a there's a CD somewhere, no, a, a cassette tape somewhere with me singing too, and it's weird. Oh no doubt. Yeah. I'm gonna, so, I'm gonna see if I can find that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah, <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah, you'd have a better. Never mind. I was <laughs> just gonna. I was just gonna bring up what we talked about before the show, but never mind. Anyway, your songs have overtones of two different artists that I know really well. Um, David Burns is obviously um, not blues and not folk but he his his voice and his overtones come out in your in your singing i don't know if you know who david burns is he's from he's the talking head yeah yeah i know him yeah okay so i love that so one. so that comes out in in your music for for me and for for bill too and obviously without any reservations bob dylan is all over your music and when you and i were talking before you said you're not really you weren't really a, a Dylan fan. Why do you think that your music sounds so Dylan-y if you're not a Dylan fan? Yeah, uh, well, I have like um, punk rock roots. I was in like <laughs> a punk too. rock band for Me like too. forever. Yeah, and I didn't get into folk music until a year and a half ago, um, you know, during COVID and all of that other stuff. I was just driving around a lot, exploring with my dog, like I mm -hmm. usually do, and, it, and folk just kept popping on folk and country americana and um i think it fits you really well yeah at this stage in my life yeah thank you yeah and i you know i never got into poetry ever in, until recently as well so there was always a poet in me and uh, always like a dreamer and imagination and it's easy to probably toss all that into the recipe of sort of a i guess maybe a dylan-esque song or just folk songs in general because mm -hmm. you're telling a story yep yeah yeah and that's what i really fell in love with was that they they tell stories and they talk about really deep things yeah yeah so that brings me back to Woody Guthrie and of course Arlo Arlo is much much more a storyteller than a musician mm -hmm. just saying just saying yeah but his father was a musician and a and a storyteller also and certainly broke the mold when it came to what folk music was going to turn into yeah you know so yeah you you get all those roots. I think the only part that's kind of missing in your whole folky thing is is um, the social justice thing. You're more about dreaming and love and mm -hmm. uh, thinking what people are really like. And yeah. your your song about what's her name, Emily. Yeah. The girl that you think is your My soulmate. soulmate. Yeah. 
Why don't you tell her that? Yeah, I think she knows. Yeah. Um, it's just, I if it's know. supposed to be, it will be. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. It w if, if that's supposed to happen, I know. Yeah. I'm old. I've been around, and I know about these things. So, <laughs> so I like that song. I love Guitar Girl. I fell in love with it the first time I heard it. Heard it again and again and again. I've had your CD stuck in my CD player for a while. Oh, cool. Because, um, I mean, I can listen to CDs in my house, mm. but I find that, believe it or not, sound in my little tiny Fiat has a resonation that's much more live. Yeah. Does that make any sense? So anyway, I love listening to your music in my car, so that's cool. Um, let's talk more about your music. When you're writing a song, you said about your last song, what was, I, I even know which one it is, it's the third one on the album, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Electric Lady Dreams. Um, yeah. When you were writing that, you said that was two songs that came together, yeah. right? How do you write a song? Do you write the words first? Do you write the music first? Do they come together? Is it your muse that happens and they come out in like five minutes? Or what's your writing style? Yeah, I usually feel most creative around between like midnight and 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, you know, when the stars are out and you're you're so you're farther away from the day and closer to sleeping and dreaming. It's, mm -hmm. it's more of that like magical time. Um, but yeah, I write the, the lyrics and the music at the same time. I sit down with my guitar and I just kind of work on that. I couldn't do like one or the other. Okay. Um, and then throughout the day as I'm going on these travels that I do, words and phrases and imagery pop into my mind, people that I meet, that all swirls around in my head throughout the day until it finally builds up and I like, kind of get a song out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, a lot of times I'll sit down and, and easy breezy in five minutes, it pops right out. There's only been a couple that I've worked on, you know, for one or two weeks. Um, but then I'll have periods where it's, I don't like write any songs. I'll sit down and I'll try to write and I'll be like, ah, yeah, this is the one thing you're good at. You can't even write a song right now. Sometimes, sometimes our muse is not there for us. Yeah. I think that if I was going to write a song, I would have written a song last night when the moon was coming up because Jupiter and Venus were like right below the moon yeah they were like kissing oh, it no. was so intense wow so if i was going to write a song it would have been last night but i'm not a songwriter yeah. but anyway um things inspire you that are i find them to be somewhat feminine yeah i find that you do a lot of music that involves women and talks about women and talks about people in general but um very feminine in in that aspect why do you think that is? It's no one's ever brought that up, and I never even thought of it until you just brought it up now. But um, you know, I was raised by my grandma, my mom, and my sister, so I had like three strong women around me. You know, okay, and that was, makes sense then. I was very close with my grandma, and I am like a hopeless romantic, so I'm always singing about falling in love, or you know, um, yeah, but um. Yeah, that is interesting. I never even, you know, that never really popped into my mind. Well, my grandma is my favorite person in the whole wide world, too. Yeah. So, I mean, I wasn't raised by her, but she lived this far down the road. Yeah. You know, and I used to jump on the back of my horse with lead lines and go trotting off to grandma's house. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was fun. But I think that men that allow their feminine underlyings to come out in their music make them more masculine. That's just my opinion. Yeah. So anyway, just my opinion. No, I know what you mean. What are you doing for music these days? Where are you playing? Who are you playing with? What are you doing? You just saw Frank Cretelli, so you did the old <laughs> church series. Mm -hmm. So yep. that was fun. Yeah, I played with Pamela Means, who is amazing. She she does a lot of like protest songs. Oh, cool. Yeah. Social really justice cool. songs. Yes, yes. Um, I have one that I didn't play. It's really nice. But... uh. Yeah, I have a show coming up in Farmington on the 24th. Um, all the shows and things I have going on, you can find them on my website, uh, charliediamondmusic.net. Um, but so I just did the album, so I'm lining up. I have a lot of stuff coming up in September. You know, nice. Like down down the line, some festivals and things and series up in like Vermont and whatnot. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So I have a birthday in September. Oh, so cool. What, what, what's your birthday? I'm a big into numerology and. The ninth. 
9960. The nine, yeah, that's a very powerful number. It is. Yeah, it I'm is. playing the ninth at Tracy Walton's Chicken Stock in, oh, at Heinz cool. Farm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That, that's a Saturday. It is, yeah. It is a Saturday. I know that because <laughs> last year it was a Friday. I had COVID. Mm. Just saying, just saying, I came home from Labor Day weekend infested with the germ. Anyway, um, so your playing can be found everywhere. Now, I have to, I have to do this. Can we get this? Can we get this? So this is Charlie's new album. A new poet in town. It's phenomenal. I'm not telling you to go buy it. I'm just telling you that this is one that you want to have in your collection. I'm telling you, you want to have it in your collection. I have it in mine. As a matter of fact, right this minute, I have two of them in mine. <laughs> I'm lucky. One of them signed. That's going nowhere fast. So you can find Charlie Diamond at charliediamond.net. You can find him on Instagram. And you can see him out at shows. And you can get this new album, which is amazing. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. I, I don't say that lightly. Yeah, Take my I, word for it I when I tell that. you. Yeah. If I tell you an album is amazing, it's because it is. And people know me, know that if I say it's amazing, it's because it, I, I don't know a lot about too many things. I'm kind of not real bright. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. But I know music. It's my thing. Yeah. So anyway, Charlie Diamond, thank you for coming to the attic. It's wonderful that you got to come here. Um, do you have one more song in your repertoire you could do for us? Yes, yes, I that do. That would be wonderful. So while Charlie unplugs and goes over to take us out with a song, let me tell you, it's only March. We could get snow. Might even be snowing out right now. Make sure that your next door neighbors, especially if they're young or elderly, make sure that your elderly neighbors have heat and fresh water. Make sure that the children that live in your neighborhood have jackets and socks on their feet and shoes on their tender little toes. Please take care of your community. Please take care of your neighbors. Believe me, if we take care of our community, our community will thrive. Spend your money in your community, not in big box places, because if you spend money in your community, it stays in your community. I love you all. Listen to Charlie as he takes you out with a song, and I'll see you all next week. Bye.
And when the chorus kicked in, she held my heart, but she also held my hand. We ended up on the stairs to a lounge in a building we like. Bishop's lounge was called, and tonight was an open mic. My Ruthie up on the stairs, and that's her own. She blew off her lips. She said, Life will make you die, but dreams will make you live. Down the block inside an old bank was an art show in the gallery. I can't afford none of the paintings, but I can afford a drink of this free. Just for me. So Ruthie stole an expensive print and did it in the teeth. On the corner was a candy store, in the window you see all kinds. Underground was the music shop where we spent most of our time. That's when Ruthie pushed me against. Thank you.